If you clicked on this video, it probably means that you want to take your role-playing to the next level and finally give your character a voice. But you don't know how. Honestly, damn, I'm sorry. That that really sucks. I, I wish you the best. Just kidding. I'm here to help. And just a quick disclaimer before this video continues, you do not need to come up with a voice for your character. Only do this if you really want to. Please do not feel pressure to or feel like you have to voice your character. It can be really difficult when a lot of people's first introduction into the world of role-playing and D&D is through D&D shows like Critical Role. They are voice actors. That is literally their job to change their voices. So please, you don't have to do this. Only do this if you want to and feel comfortable enough to do so. You still watching? Then you probably want to. Probably. The first part to this process in finding your character's voice is to determine how far you are willing to go. That sounds incredibly ominous. Would you fucking kill someone? No, it's more like how far are you willing to change your voice? Are you willing to try a brand new accent? Would you change the pitch of your voice completely? And if so, how high or low are you able to go comfortably? I think that's a really good baseline to start with. Personally, I do different voices for all of my characters, but I don't change the pitch of my voice at all. Some people are so good at it, but when I do it, it's just no, no. But I often change my accent or the way I inflect. That is what I meant by how far are you willing to go? Also, I would kill someone. The next step is to think about your character. Chances are you probably already hear a voice in your head that fits them pretty pretty well once you try and pass the other choices. If you do, that's fantastic. Try and mimic it. But if not, that's totally fine too. We can work on it. First, let's start with accent. And again, if you are not comfortable changing your accent, that's totally fine. You can skip forward and forget that this entire thing happened. Also, forget all the other incriminating sentences I may have said during this video. In real life, accents have no bearing on what somebody is like and who they are as a person. But in a role play setting, it can really help immerse yourself into the world and with your character. It just sets the tone for who your character is. For example, the last Witcher game I was in, and yes, I know I referenced this fucking game a lot, but it was so good. Okay, I played a Redanian noble who was very well educated and definitely had a stick up her ass. And to sort of sell the point across, I just gave her a really posh English accent. This was basically how she sounded. Well met. My name is Fasana Elise Octavia Eldgear of Oxenford, and my family has very strong ties to the Redanian Secret Service. And that was supposed to be a fucking secret. Obviously, the Witcher world is technically set in a fantasy reimagining of Poland, so they probably didn't sound like that. I say probably, they definitely didn't speak the Queen's fucking English. <laughs> But the poshness really worked for her. Like the moment she opened her mouth, you kind of knew what she was about. And that's just one type of accent. Two other party members were from Nilfgaard and Dol Blathana, which are two territories outside of Redania. The Witcher system has a language skill, which determines how fluent you are in each language. Both of these characters were barely fluent in common, which was the main language in Redania. So when speaking in common, both players put on an accent. And they weren't like specific accents either. They were just like vaguely foreign. In my opinion, this was a really good way to set the characters and place them in their settings. It was a constant reminder that they weren't from the lands where the campaign is taking place. And because the Witcher world is incredibly fucking racist, kind of checks out. And the cool thing was when both players were speaking in their native language, their accent was gone. So there are two different ways to decide what accent your character might have. What type of person are they and what accent brings that across the most? Where are they from? Would that change their accent at all? So let's say you don't want to do an accent, or you do, and you are, but it's just not enough. The second way that you can change your character's voice is through inflections. It is the perfect way to get your character's personality across. It's not about changing how they sound, but changing how they speak. I know that sounds like the exact same thing, but it's actually not, and I'm not confusing you, you're confusing yourself. That's like a girl boss. For example, let's say you have a really nervous character. They might speak really quickly because their nerves are constantly there and they don't really know how to cope with it and they have to constantly socialize with the party and that's really hard for them. Maybe your character is very smart and conniving, so they speak very slowly and very precisely and enunciate everything they say because every word counts. Or maybe you have a character that's super full of themselves, so every time they speak, it sounds like everything is an absolute fact and is completely correct. Or maybe your character has a very strong hyperfixation that they kept info dumping 
on people that didn't really give a shit and it started to make them feel bad because it was also just kind of annoying everybody else and nobody else wanted that info dump so they started the YouTube channel and started talking about it all the fucking time just to call the voices. <clears throat> this is a really good way to get your character across without doing an accent or doing something crazy like changing the pitch of your voice. For example, my bard Vic in the D&D game that I'm currently playing is very charming and self-assured. And he's also a dude and I can't do a man voice to save my life so he pretty much talks like this. Hi, I'm Vic Vanellis and I'm incredibly charming but I have a negative one to my initiative and my stats are ass. But yours is nice. A fantastic example of this is Jason Carl, who is a storyteller for several VTM campaigns online. He doesn't change his voice per se, at least not in the way that Matt Mercer does in Critical Role, but he just changes the way that he speaks and it is still incredibly immersive. Where'd you find her? She was on the campus of Griffith College. She does not know her sire. You don't know the one who made you? Let, let's go. Great. Okay. <laughs> All right. If you haven't watched LA by night, by the way, you absolutely should. So let's say you figured out exactly how you want your character to sound. And at this point, you've probably started practicing in the mirror to get it just right. <laughs> But now you're at the table. Everyone is watching you, and it's your turn to introduce your new character. And you've just internally shit yourself. Getting comfortable to voice your character for the first time can be incredibly daunting. For me personally, it took me several sessions to even get comfortable trying out my new character's voice. Also, I'm just really shy, so I wait for other people to do a voice first, and then I start joining in. And that's okay. You don't have to be a professional role player. You don't have to be anything. The main goal of any roleplay game, in my opinion, is just to have fun and feel comfortable. It can feel really weird to put on a character voice, especially if you've never done it before or nobody else at the table is doing it. And I said this before and I'll say it again, but at a good table, nobody will judge you. You might even give somebody else the confidence to go ahead and try a voice too. Take your time and go at your own pace. If it takes you 20 sessions to get into your character's voice, so be it. Just remember, you don't have to be a professional because chances are you fucking aren't. And you know what? Neither am I. Anyway, have fun. I hope this helped. Wowzy, wowie. Thank you so much to my patrons over at Patreon. I mean, my simps over at Patreon for helping funding this video and making my dreams come true by being able to talk about all this autistic bullshit on a YouTube channel where other people can watch and stuff. And wow, you look really good today. I'm not talking to you unless you're a patron. Only the patrons look really good today. You look adequate. Anyway, thank you. Bye.